afternoon. We're here at Sean Murphy's house, uh, a.k.a. Mr. Miyagi, and uh, we're here to talk about bonsais and bonsai pest control, bonsai care, bonsai fertilizing. And uh, this is another one in the series of garden legends. And uh, we'll be going through um, Sean's house and hopefully showing you some pictures of his collection. So, Sean, hi. welcome to uh, Legacy Garden Legends. And uh, thanks for taking some time out from your gardening in your, in your beautiful, uh, I don't know, bonsai forest, I call it. So we're just going to talk about pests and pesticides and, uh, and fertilizers. But first I want to ask you a few questions about your bonsai history. How long have you been doing bonsai? About 40 years, plus minus. 40 years. 40 yeah. years, yeah. What, what started? Actually a long time. <laughs> yeah. so what started bonsai? Where, how did you get involved in bonsai? I just read a book, and uh, it, 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 that's what sparked my interest, and then from then on it just developed into a passion, and uh, it, it just carried on and on and on, and we've moved three times, sold houses and moved on to bigger bigger premises to try and house all the, the collection that we, we eventually ended up with. So, so just hold, you, you, you actually moved houses to house your bonsais? Yeah, definitely. So wife had no say, kids had no say, the bonsais... They had the say. The bonsai's ruled. The bonsai rules your life. It's a passion, and uh, I think you've got to, when you've got a passion, you've got to carry it out. Otherwise, everything else fails around you. So, I know there's an argument between some of our bonsai friends on who's got the most trees. But just, just as a guess, how many trees do you think you have? About three thousand plus about, minus. About three thousand trees. Yeah, about three thousand. Yeah. Now. I know, I know you've retired. Um, you spend how much time in the garden every day dealing with these trees? 24-7. 24-7? Yeah. My okay. wife, my, my wife um, says I should spend a bit of time on the house, but uh, we do, do also get a bit of time maybe on the weekends because I, I say being retired every day is, is a Saturday, so a Saturday. it's a wonderful experience. And working on trees, it, gives you, it just makes your life complete. Are you you're still quite involved in, in bonsai clubs and bonsai societies. Um, I think you were the president of one of the societies. Yeah, chairman of the Durban Bonsai Society. And you're still actively involved? I'm an honorary member of the, of the club and I'm, I, I think I'm the second longest member, surviving member. We have one other, which is Jesse Edwards. Okay, and you've been a member for the, that society for? 40 years. Also. 40, 40 years. And... Uh, so that club still meets and you still meets involved. every second Sunday of the month okay. down in Durban. Okay, and, and for those of you that don't know, Sean is uh, actively involved in, in the Legacy Nursery. He's, uh, he's on the Bonsai Trust with me uh, at the nursery and you'll see a lot of Sean's trees at the nursery which he's put on display and I, I thank you for that because I think a lot of people get a lot of a joy. I mean, one of the things that I tried to do with the nursery was try and take trees out of people's gardens and put them on display so people can enjoy them. I think the one thing that I needed to ask you though, and I know it's a big, uh, it's a big thing, you, you like big trees. Big trees, yeah. I, I, start, I, I had uh, small trees when I first started and uh, we, 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 the, the club, when I was a member of it, started with the Durban Club, we brought out um, an overseas demonstrator from America his, his name was John Nock, and he'd written a couple of books. Unfortunately, he passed away, but a legend passed away. And uh, he was instigated me going for big trees because he also did big trees. And the first demonstration he did in Durban was on one of my figs, one of the big trees. So I just carried on with big trees. The only problem with big trees is to pick them up. You need a lot of friends. There's another story to your garden, is that you also collect wood and you collect rocks. rocks. Am I correct? Rocks, wood, and whatever else is whatever out there else. in the bush. Now, I know because you've collected me some wood, and uh, often you go out on these trips to darkest Africa to look for pieces of wood, which is normally burnt for firewood most yeah, of the time. Yeah. But uh, you've got quite a wood collection, um, which I believe you've left to me in your will. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you've got quite a rock collection, which uh, which is amazing. I mean, well, grinding some, stones. These grinding stones. I must have over a hundred. Hundred grinding stones, yeah. and a lot of them are quite interesting because they they grinding stones used for uh, for grinding maize meal. Or yeah, that, that's that's how they, they were originally made. They um, 
the different areas, the Africans, when they, they pass away, they, um, they live in their huts and then they pass away, the hut crumbles down and the stone is turned over. And the neighbours know that the, where these huts are, so we go out and we collect them and uh, obviously pay them for them. And we, but we've got a, a couple of friends that I worked with in the factory when I worked in the factory. And uh, people come and visit and they say, oh, I'd love a grinding stone. And I've got a special one that's over in the corner there. Um, it's a blue granite stone, and I say to them, no, you can have that one if you can pick it up by yourself. And so far, everybody's failed. Let's talk about problems with bonsai, uh, especially in Natal. What are the issues you have with bonsais, especially well, in the collection? Uh, you, you get, well, let's go, we'll go to the figs first, because I, I, when I lived in Durban, I grew figs, and uh, I became known to, as, throughout the country as the fig master, or the king, because I had... I did a lot of figs and I grew a lot of figs and my, as you can see around them, my figs are big. I've got a couple over there in the corner that are the size of my waist. So they are big trees. They're huge. They are massive. Huge. Massive. Massive figs. Massive. <laughs> yeah, they're six man trees. Yeah. Um, but they remain here. So to move them to Legacy Nursery is, is near impossible. We have moved one there. Um, but the fig has a, has a, has a little um, weevil that rolls the leaves. He actually chews the leaf, he chews the juice out of the leaf, and then he rolls the leaf, and he lives inside there. But to get rid of, poison him with your chemicals that you use here, that microcyclone works on that, on those. Well, you, you, and you're past then at six, so so, mecha, so so let's read it out. Mecha, mecha th thyre, yeah, okay, so that mecha one. Mecha yeah. Okay, mecha uh, But so, your chemprin also, is, also works on, on, um, on, the, on those guys. Okay, so that we just mix up in a spray and we, we dose it. Now the formulations inside the, in, inside the, the container in the, in the box, and you must stick to those. Don't dilute okay. it further because then you have less effect. Because, I mean, people worry often when they come into the shop and they talk about bonsais, orchids, delicate plants, they're always worried about putting stuff on because uh, trees are old. I mean, in, in some cases, uh, tens, maybe 50, 60 years old. They're worried about putting products on so they must read the inserts properly. Um, and obviously these things kill a lot of other things as well. So, um, so that's the one, thrips. Th thrips is, is the worst on, thrips is the worst on olives. Thrips can kill your olive stone dead. It gets onto the leaf, it, well, underneath the leaf, the, 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 white, the, the little thrips fly, fly, lays his eggs underneath. Then the little guy hatches, and, but there's lots of them, they hatch underneath. And uh, an example is, this is what the leaf would look like with the thrips on the leaf. The leaf actually gets all stippled. Um, I've got a couple more here, and they're all climbing off. Oh, well, there's one down there. That's what the leaf looks like. There's a good example. That's what the leaf looks like. Don't, don't, touch, don't touch it underneath. Okay. That's what the leaf looks like. So the leaf tends to go from a, gre a it dark goes from green. A, they suck the sap out of the leaf. So it goes to a light green. It goes to a light green, and then eventually it, it goes brown, a beigey brown and drops off. Now, if I turn the leaf over, you'll see the thrips underneath. Now, if okay. you were to crush those, they smell like a, like a stink bug. Okay. And uh, those Let's little just guys... just turn it towards the camera there. So, so to, to understand, they almost set up like an IV line in the yeah, leaf. Yeah, and, they, and they, suck it. they suck out all the, the, all the sap out of the leaf. Right. And then eventually that whole branch dies back to the trunk. Okay. And if it's not attended to, you'll, you can lose your tree. I mean, obviously, with the amount of uh, bonsais that you have, I mean, one of the things that I always hear when people come to the bonsais is they say, look, I'm not going to get a bonsai because the last one I got, I killed. Uh, and one of the things I keep telling people is, you know, bonsais are really a small tree in a pot. And I think sometimes we overdo this whole bonsai thing. Um, but the one thing that people must realize is that, you know, we are putting it in a pot and we are draining the soil all the time. So very good soil and good drainage is always a thing. But... We've got to feed. Feeding so is most important. Feeding important. How are you feeding your, your bonsais? Well, I, I grow most of my bonsais in washed river sand, Amgani sand. In, in Japan, they use a lot of akadama clay. It's a, it's a clay, but it's all different size granules, and, uh, but they, they fertilize into that. We use a lot of, um, as I say, Amgani sand, which is washed, and uh, if we take out the farms out the Amgani sand, so it's basically a sterile mixture. So you have to fertilize for the tree to grow. And uh, I use the top one is your nitrosol. nitrosol. It 
it's a, one of the best that you can get. There's a lot of other products on the market, but Nitrosol has been proven. It's got the full balanced uh, organic uh, 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 formula Mixed. inside it, and that works very well. Now with Nitrosol, you know, it's, it's mixing. We sell a lot of the product. We mix the product up, and we basically put it into a watering can, and we, and we water. And I know we water every two to three weeks. Um, and I think what people need to realize is that a good drainage in a bonsai is important and you, you're literally letting the water run through all the time so you have to water the root structures and make sure you're getting good, good feed through. Um, but there's other ways of doing it as well. At pelletized fertilizers, there's a lot of different products on the market and uh, the one that I've been using recently because a couple of the products have changed is that Bio Atlantic. Right, so you've got, a, you've got like a, a, a pellet type product. Yeah, it's a pellet product. Which you use like this. And this is an organic product. Some of it's got, some products have got sea kelp in it. Some products have got uh, other, but this is a, this is a, uh, a bio product. And what I found in the nursery is if, if we apply this directly onto the soil, it tends to repel water, which is not great. Um, so what you found is a little trick that you've got, um, and you put this in a small container. I do, yes. And then, and then you let that uh, water through. So I think uh, what you do is you put it into a small... And I put I think, it into a small container like that with a little wire bent. It's a, it's a little wire that's bent into an L, to an L shape. And I push it down into the container through the hole, and I push that down into the pot. Wrong. Sorry push that down into the pot, and then that gets pushed into the soil so that that pot stays on, onto, onto the bonsai. And then, then you we put, put some we put pellets the, inside We put there. the pellets inside. Yeah. I only put half, just about half, because when you water that, that product does swell up. And there is one disadvantage in doing this, is that your flies come and lay eggs, eggs in there. there. But we have a solution to that. When we put this on, you just give a little squirt of your, of your any one of your insecticide, just a little bit on top, it stays away. and it keeps your thrips and your white flower away, and uh, you don't get any of that, because if you pile it on top of your pot in, in a thick layer, you get all these little maggots coming out from the flies, Right. because flies lay their eggs and then they turn into maggots, and that's unsightly and it uh, makes the plant smell a lot more. And uh, it keeps that, um, also that big, um, this is a Christmas beetle, that big white. They will lay that. They'll lay the egg in here too. And then they, they convert that into their little capsule in it and then they fly away. That, that product on top keeps them away. I'm sure the, the one other thing that I get asked a lot about bonsai is, is watering. Uh, I mean, how often do you water your bonsais? I mean, is this that something that's is overwatering your bonsai? I know if, you're not, if, you, if you don't have proper drainage, you can kill it by overwatering it or getting root rot. But is, is there such a thing as overwatering? If your soil is correct, when I say soil, your growing medium is correct, overwatering is not a problem because it will drain out. It drains out. It holds enough, holds enough moisture inside there to sustain the plant till the next time it, you water it. If you have very, very hot days that we've been experiencing recently, you have to water more regularly. I, I, water once a day if I have to. I try and push it a bit because of the, the, the drought situation. I do have water tanks on the property to help also. And uh, so, so with that, I'm going to say, you, you, maybe you water a little bit more than normal. When I moved up from Durban, I grew baobabs up here. It took me three years to realize that baobabs do not grow in waterfall. And uh, some people listen. Mine do. Mine do. No, they don't. Not in waterfall. You do not live in waterfall. <laughs> <laughs> well, I live in Cliff and I've got beautiful baobabs. Yeah. But no, they, up here, they slowly deteriorated. So why not grow something that grows well up here? And what grows well up here is your junipers. Yes. All your junipers, your pines, all the junipers grow well up here. On the coast, they do not grow well. They grow well up here. Yeah. You know, in Durban, we joked when we do a demonstration down there, when you've done the demonstration and you've thrown all the pieces onto the ground, all the offcuts, by the time the demonstration's finished, those yeah. offcuts have rooted. Okay. Because it's such a, a wonderful climate down there. Certain things don't grow as well. Yeah. And that's a juniper. Junipers do not grow well in Durban. 
last thing, I think, uh, well, there's two more questions. Just on tools and tool care. You know, a lot of people come to the nursery, they ask about tools, and a lot of people buy cheap tools, and they rust, and they don't look after them. I mean, we do sell imported tools there. They do cost a bit more, and they do last. I know in your workshop you've got a, a huge amount of tools in that, but I noticed with you and some of the other bonsai guys, your tools are in immaculate condition. I mean, I, I just look, you know, if, if you can see there, um, these are imported uh, tools over here. You've got another set of... Uh, Secretaries, yeah, and I mean they're in immaculate condition. Uh, I do, how do you look after your tools and get them like this? Well, I, if, with cutting figs, you get a lot of that milk on them, and you got must clean it off. You can use an ordinary hand cleaner or just thinners, and that cleans off. Once your tool is blunt, you must resharpen it. Do not leave it out when you finish working with it. Leave it out on your bonsai pot because it'll rust. These are ma these are made from mild steel, obviously tool steel, and they rust. And then, and, unless you can afford to buy stainless, stainless. Yeah. this is stainless steel. As you can see, it doesn't rust. It's cut a lot of trees, but it doesn't rust. But you still don't leave it lying outside because that particular tool I brought back from overseas, and that was eighty pounds. Yeah. Converted. It's yeah. what sixteen like four million rand. Yeah, uh, sixteen <laughs> sixteen hundred rand for a. <laughs> um, and now just on the tool, uh, talking about the tools, I mean, uh, after you've rusted a lot of tools, you'll learn how to buy and look after proper tools. But you, you obviously look after... People ask me as well, and I, I know I have this question with orchids, is, is do you sterilise your tools? I mean, if you're working with diseases and that, surely if you're cutting and cutting, you're passing disease onto trees. Do you, you clean your tools and look after them so that you don't pass on diseases? No, maybe that's a fault I have. I, I don't. Uh... Some the, some of the demonstrators that came out here did that. They even they dunk their tools. Yes, they sterilise. Sterilise it, it all the time. I don't. Yeah. I haven't. I know. I know. With the orchid guys, they sterilise no, all the time. Orchids are different. Orchids, yeah. orchids, you pass on that um, disease that affects your flowers. Right. And uh, I mean, maybe it's something. Sap, maybe it's something. Maybe it's something that can be looked at. Okay. And I've had no sorry. Sorry to interrupt. I've had no side effects okay. as such from not sterilising that I can say it's caused the problem. Okay. And then you, you spent a lot of time in the sun, I know that. Um, you've even got me to wear a hat uh, out <laughs> in the sun. So I think just a warning out there for the Bonsai guys to wear a hat and make sure we're out in the sun. Where did the name Miyagi come from? It's, it's a funny thing. We, we, I was helping a, a, a person um, with their club and uh, the person's husband um, called me Mr. Miyagi because I had, I had a long drooping moustache and everybody said I look like Mr. Miyagi and that, and that name stuck and uh, now I've even, I've even got Mr. Miyagi on my, my 4 by 4 Your number plate. My number plate's Mr. Miyagi. I noticed that. Well Sean, thanks for, for all of that and I, I mean for people that know the nursery, they see you around trimming trees and helping us out and you're part of the trust and uh, I'm sure for everyone watching we'll get some pictures of your trees and put them on the, on the show. But uh, I just want to thank you for all your help. And I know myself and some of the other bonsai collectors call you a mentor. And uh, may long that last uh, for all of us. So thank you very much for all your help and your mentorships. And thank you for joining me on the video program. It's Appreciate it. Thank you very pleasure. much. It's only a pleasure. Thank you.